Hello, welcome to United Charismatic Healing Ministry, and this is your regular host, Pastor Eddie Cochrane. Uh, thank God for your life. I bless the Lord for you. I've been praying for you that God will minister to you and meet you at the point of your needs. That the Lord will encourage you and build you up and energize your faith in Him in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. That our faith will be alive, our faith will be strong, our faith will be active in Jesus' mighty name. Even as we share this afternoon, may the Lord minister to you and meet you at the point of your needs and show himself mighty and powerful on your behalf. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to continue what I started last time. That what do you do when you feel dissatisfied? When there's no satisfaction in anything you're doing. You don't feel fulfilled. You don't feel you feel always feel empty. You always feel like you're inadequate. You don't feel complete. I want us to look through some of the scriptures. That will help us build our faith on the word of a living God. That you not build your faith in human wisdom or human philosophy. But build your faith on the word of a living God. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. So it's only through the word of God that we, we we're able to produce faith. Through the word of God that we're able to walk in faith and to, and to exercise faith. So we'll go through a few of scriptures. And, and we'll elaborate on it and see how best we can minister to you and those who are hearing and those who are listening and those who are watching. That the Lord will meet you. I might say something that is some part of what I have prepared and that God will use that even to minister to you where you need his ministration. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost is the only one who knows how to minister. He knows where you are. He knows where we all are. And he knows how to minister to and then reach us where we are. God bless you mightily. Let's turn our Bibles to Philippians chapter 4 and read verse 12 and 13. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 12 and 13. It says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, to abound and to suffer, and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul is talking to the Philippians. He says, I have learned that in every situation I find myself, I know how to balance myself. When I'm hungry, I know how to go into a fast. So I don't let the hunger depress me. I just shift into a fast mood and begin to pray in that process. And use that period of time as a fasting and prayer time instead of murmuring and complaining that I don't have anything to eat. He says, I have learned to abound and I have learned to abase. I have learned to be full and I have learned to be hungry. I have learned to balance wherever I find myself, making sure that I don't let the situation and circumstances depress me, but find myself on top all the time because God is with him. Amen. In Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies you, your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. It says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Everything that is in me, me, bless the name of the Lord. Everything that is in me. My heart, my lungs, my intestines, my spirit man, my soul. Bless the Lord. And don't ever forget his benefits. He we are loaded with God's benefits. So don't ever forget it. He said, bless the Lord of my soul and forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, all your sins, all your transgressions. And the Lord is able to forgive and he forgives. So don't forget that. If he's going to let allow his, the, the load of sin to be upon us, we will we'll be go down in no time. We will be depressed in no time. We'll be weighed down because of those sins. Praise the Lord. 
But he said he forgives us of all our sins and our iniquities and our transgressions. Who heals all our diseases. That when we are sick, the Lord has made provision for our healing. And he heals us of all our sicknesses. Who redeems our life from destruction. The one who delivers us from the plans of darkness. Delivers our life from this destruction. And puts our feet upon a rock to stay and establish our going. The one who leads us and guides us and directs us throughout this life we live. Those are some of the benefits we derive of the Lord. So don't ever feel unsatisfied. We have more to talk about than to complain about. Because many are the blessings of the Lord. It is this blessing that makes one rich and he adds no sorrow to it. If you are not rich now, the Lord is still working on your case. He's still working on your life. That he'll get you to a place where he will bless you and make you rich. Amen. And he says his riches adds no sorrow. So if there is anything in your life that when God blesses you and makes you rich, and will bring sorrow into your life, the Lord will hold on till he deals with those things. Then he will open the door for your blessing to flow. It is he that gives one the power to get wealth. Getting wealth is derived from the power of the Lord. He's the one who can give you that power. So do what is necessary. And very soon you'll be doing what is impossible. Do what is necessary. The basic things in, in, in the Christian life. Do those things. Study his word. Read the word. Pray, fellowship, do good, evangelize, be a witness. And as you do these things, God in His sovereignty will bring to pass His blessings into your life. Obey Him to the letter. Obey Him. Obey His word and obey His voice. And He will bring these blessings into your life like you've never known before. And he move you from dissatisfaction to satisfaction. He will satisfy you with good things. He will satisfy your mouth with good things. And he will empower you to enjoy it. Because there are some people who have good things in life, but they can't even enjoy it. Some of them, they are very rich and wealthy, but they, they are sick. They can't even eat. But the Lord will make sure that his blessing will not add sorrow. You will be in the position where you can enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Amen. And make you completely satisfied in Him. Praise God. In Psalm 107 verse 9, it says, For He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. So there should be some kind of longing and some kind of hunger in your soul for the Lord and for the things of God. If, you, if, if those things don't concern you, then it will be very, God, very hard for God to satisfy you. You should have a longing and a hunger in your soul for the things of God. And He will satisfy you. Amen. He will satisfy you. Because where there's no hunger, there's no satisfaction. If I'm not hungry to eat any food, I don't, I don't care for food because I'm not hungry. But when I'm hungry, then I can appreciate food when somebody gives me food. Or when I buy food to eat, then I can appreciate the food because I'm hungry. But if I'm not hungry, if you give me food, it's, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't mean anything to me because I'm not hungry. Praise the Lord. So as we hunger and long in our soul for the things of God, then God will come through for us. He should see the hunger in your soul. He should see the hunger in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Isaiah 12, verse 2 and 3, it says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For yeah, for yeah, the Lord is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. God is our salvation. He has purchased us with His precious blood. He has saved our soul. He snatched us 
from the fire we were heading towards and brought us to a place of safety. He delivered us from darkness into His marvelous light. And He's put a song in our lips and our mouth and joy in our hearts. He says, I will trust and not be afraid. You have to convince yourself to be trusting God. You have to tell yourself, my soul, trust the Lord. Because if you don't trust Him, nothing will happen for you. Trust is and having an utmost confidence that God will do what He says He will do. That He will perform that which He has promised He will perform in your life. Trust Him. And do not be afraid. Fear is not of God. Fear comes from the camp of the enemy. Fear brings torment. Fear brings crippleness. Fear is the opposite of faith. Where there's fear, there's no faith. So don't be afraid. He told Joshua several times, be very strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. And I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you to the very end of the age. Amen. He says, therefore, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. He says, when you put your trust in Him and you are not afraid, He will bring you to the place where you will draw water from the wells of salvation in joy, in, in gladness. Hallelujah. But you have to do the trusting. And you have to not be afraid. Because we cannot be trusting and be afraid at the same time. Both of them don't, they don't stay in the same place. Just like night, night and day, they don't coexist. When night is falling, day goes away. When day is dawning, night goes away. Same thing, you cannot be trusting and be afraid at the same time. They don't work hand in hand. One is the opposite of the other. So please, trust the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He will direct your path. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will, he will show Himself strong and mighty on your behalf. He has promised and He will not fail. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. He says, my God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Everything you have need of, the Lord, by His grace, will make provision for you. Everything you have need of, be it spiritual, be it material, be it physical, be financial, be emotional. The Lord's grace will abound towards you in those areas. He will supply every need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Through the grace of God, God will meet you at the point of your needs and show His powerful and glorious on your behalf. He will supply all your needs in Jesus' mighty name. In Isaiah 55 verse 1, it says, Ho, everyone who tests, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. It's talking about spiritual things. You don't pay money for spiritual things. Come. Come means come to the place of of prayer, the place of exchange, the place where divinity meets humanity. It's place, the place of altar where God will meet His children. And it is the place of prayer. Come! Anytime you hear come in the scriptures, where God is calling His people, He's calling us to the place of prayer. Amen. Call upon Him while He's near. And seek Him while he may be found. For very soon, soon and very soon, the days of a Gentile shall end. And we the Gentiles will seek God and will not find God. 
Because there's a time limit for the Gentiles. This is the door that has been opened for the Gentiles to come in as much as we can come in. But don't think that door will be open forever. There will come a day when that door will be shut. And the Lord will turn his face back to Israel and deal with his people and save them. So if you're a Gentile, and Gentile means a, a, a non-Israelite. You are not Israelite by, by birth. You're anybody else who, is a, who wants to be a Christian is a Gentile. If you're not coming from, from the land of Israel. So we, our time will come when this door will be shut. So please, if you, if you want to get in, get in now. Because we don't know when the door will be shut. Enter in right now. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. That gives you access. That is your visa to heaven. As you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior and begin to serve Him, begin to walk with Him, begin to do His will, then you will experience His blessings, His protection, His grace, His goodness, His mercy. Everything that He has will be released into your life. And He will satisfy you with good things. He will renew your youth like the eagle. Amen. But you have to do the coming. You have to come in first so that you can possess your possessions. So that all the blessing that God has bestowed upon His children can be, can be yours also. It is my prayer that if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, make it a mandate, make it an effort today that you will invite Him into your heart. It's very simple. I can lead you into that prayer. And if you're there and you're listening, please say this after me. Mean it from your heart. It is your prayer. I'm just helping you to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, today I have heard your word. And I'm convinced that you came on earth. And after 30 years, you died. After 33 years, you died. And you were buried. And on the third day, you rose from the dead. And today, you are sitting on the right hand of the Father in majesty. Lord, I invite you into my heart. Come and be the Lord of my life and the Savior of my soul. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Wash me with your precious blood and make me white as snow. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life and make me one of yours. Lord, I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer with me, today you have been brought into the kingdom of the living God. Today you are, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You are a child of God. You are born again. And your life will never remain the same. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, as many as have received you this afternoon, I pray that your grace will abound and your glory shall be revealed. Fill them to the overflow with your spirit and empower them to speak with new tongues. Lord, lead them and guide them. Direct them. Lead them to a right church where they will be discipled in the word of the living God. And Lord, bless them beyond their imaginations. Bless them beyond measure. Bless them with the desires of their heart. Cause, their desires of, cause the desires of their heart to be granted in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, and I bless you. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you all mightily. Thank you so much for being there, and I will see you again soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.